Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am so excited today because I have the other half of Jay, April from Spiritually Raw. How you doing, April? Oh, I'm so wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me on today. I just love your energy and I love being in your presence. Oh, it's, same. Uh, it's just a, it's a great honor. Thank you. Well, thank you too for coming on. And I'm so excited. I know you guys have really gotten to know Jay. Um, but again, April is Jay's other half. And this is very the better bad. half. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I was going to let you say it. But <laughs> um, um, well, and this is a very important conversation because we're going to, we're going to, you know, as you guys know, when Jay comes on, we, we talk a lot about the 5D economy and, and shifting in the workforce and actually working for yourself and doing work that you love versus feeling obligated to a job because you feel like you have to be there. That's the shift in consciousness. And April and I today want to kind of to discuss the role of the divine feminine with this new workforce and potentially working for yourself, doing your own broadcasting. And I was telling you, April, something really fascinating that I heard the other day, and it really kind of stopped me in my tracks and made me really start to think. Um, they were discussing this, like the feminist movement when the women started going to work and what's actually happened in our society is that a lot of women, a lot of the women watching us right now work full time, have children. And then on top of that, they're also full time taking on the domestic duties of the house. They're mm -hmm. also the primary caregiver to their children. And it's and not times parents too. they're, you know, that spreads far and wide. And it's always the female and we know that female and this is not a knock towards men, we just know that females are biologically better at multitasking than men are. Um, they're able to pay attention to multiple things at one time. And and we do know that children tend to, especially small children, tend to cling to mother as the primary caregiver a lot. And it's just, and it's not a knock towards men, but a lot of times what happens, April, is that the men will come home from work and they start to zone out. They go crack a beer open where mom comes home from work. And I'm not saying that, so please don't take offense, men, if you do pitch in. But this is just generally speaking, mom is the one still responsible for dinner, for helping the kids with the homework, for doing the, the laundry, laundry. <laughs> the dogs, taking the dogs oh. out. And I was telling you, April, I, I don't have children, but I could, I, I do that. Like in our, in my uh, domestic situation, I take on just naturally most of the domestic on top of having a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And it really got me thinking because I'm, I, I see both sides of it where women want to stay home and be mothers. That's fantastic. But I also see, cause I, I know April, I think we're both very independent women. Like I like going and doing, and I like having something to do and I like being in the world and so I can understand, I'm not saying that every woman has to go back and be like a housewife if they don't want to, but if you want to work and you also are taking on the primary role in the domestic house, what better job to have than to work for yourself? Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree anymore. You know, kudos to all the moms out there that are full-time moms, but also full-time work outside of the house. Honestly, I don't even know how you do it. Yeah, uh, It's, it's. A miracle. And, uh, you know, I, I, I see a lot of moms that are literally up till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, just trying to get caught up. And I see it with my own family members. And I'm like, how are you like surviving? I don't understand how you're not physically and mentally exhausted. And the truth of the matter is they, they are because when you get caught in this wheel, and it's so hard to get out of it, you it, it's draining. Um, when People start to live in alignment, Bryce, with who they truly are. You don't have to run like that. That's when your life really starts to shift. And the, I think one of the hardest things is actually making the shift because there's that part of your mind that thinks, well, if, if I take that leap of faith, and I really do believe it is a leap of faith to leave a full-time job or even, you know, to start out something part-time, but to take that leap of faith and say, you know what, I want to be able to work from my laptop. Um, it's often, often a scary thought for a lot of people because they sometimes they just don't even know where to begin or they think if I do begin and then what if I fail? Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, my husband, and then I have to explain this to my, my friends and so forth and so on. So there's that resistance factor, but you have to listen to your heart. 
You have to do what is going to make you feel alive. If you're now, I have family family members that work the nine to five job and we're actually nine to seven job and they're truly happy. They're fine with it. They're, they don't feel a disconnect or a discord in their life. And that's great. If you live that and you don't feel like there's a discord, then that's by all mean, means a bird of a different feather altogether. But if you're in that place or that space where you're like, I don't like what I'm doing anymore. This is just not making me feel fulfilled. I'm not getting enough out of this. And the next thing you know, what do you start doing? You start nitpicking on the people that you love the most, the people that are in your house. You start taking it out on your spouse. You start taking it out on your children. And that it's truly because you're not living in alignment with who you really are, what your spirit really wants for you. And once you start to make that shift, you're going to see your whole entire household is going to shift. So I am a huge advocate of everything that you are saying. Absolutely. It, I, you're, and you're so right. Like I don't see my sister, for example, she is a stay at home mom by choice. Uh, her and her husband made that decision and she's got three kids I swear to God, she is busier than most human beings I know with three kids, school, soccer, piano, gymnastics, not to mention she's a, a big cook. So she cooks all of their meals, you know, and, and I don't and I think about what if she had a full time job on top of that. Now, yeah, again, some women really enjoy that. They really enjoy going into the office. But I know some women and I've heard so many of my friends complain that when, you know, their kid has a recital at school they have to go and request time from their boss to step away for an hour to go and watch their child do a school play which we know in in most people's hearts the most important event of that day is being there for their child at their school play right and, I, and as you're saying that april i'm thinking about and it is it is a leap of faith it really is to decide that you are going to start doing content or broadcasting or or anything um that that's that's away from the norm right that the normal templates that we that we think of nine to fives but you know as they say a lot it's not the the quantity of the time you work but the quality of the time you work and I know, like, for example, for the moms watching right now, like we were supposed to film this last week, but we got our, I got my schedule mixed up and it was no big deal because we don't have a corporate CEO boss that we have to go to. So if you're a mom from home and your 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 school calls and the kids sick or you all of a sudden last minute need to go to a baseball game. When you're doing this stuff, not only does it make your heart happy when you're actually creating content that you enjoy and you're you're connecting with like minded people. But when you're able to be flexible with your schedule in order to do your primary job, which I know for most people, that is their first love is being that mother mm -hmm. and and, you know, and being able to take your kids to school and not worry about rushing off to work. You can come home and then kind of have your own. And how important is that? And, you know, thinking of like working for yourself versus all of these women and, and men who are doing full-time jobs and full-time care for their their loved ones or their elderly parents or their children they don't have much time for themselves do they no and it, there's i for for me personally it's the ultimate freedom i've always um been an entre entrepreneur i've always been a, a 1099 i've never really ever been a w2 to employee because it's just not my dna <laughs> right but um even when i was working like in the corporate world so to speak um and when you are working for someone else, even though no matter you may have freedom within that, you still feel bound and tied to someone or something else. You still are you still are handcuffed, so to speak. And when you're really able to release those handcuffs, um, it is the most liberating, it's the most freeing, it's the best experience ever. Ever, when you know that you can do what you want, feel good about what you're doing, and also on top of it, I mean, let's be realistic, you could do what you want, but if you're not making any money, yeah, it's not going to work, right? <laughs> you yeah. have got to yeah. also yeah. earn an income to be able to support this type of lifestyle. And um, that I, I thought of one thing before I was going to say something. Um, 
just even the smallest things. I remember when Alex was in school and, you know, he, he gets, he would get done school at like two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon. And I had the freedom to be able to pick him up, you know, go and pick him up in the loop, <laughs> do the loop all those years. Right. Yeah. Like, that was like our time together. Right. And we would have like these like, nice little talks. Right. And those little moments, those, those little moments that people that may take for granted, they're very, very special. And they go and stretch for, you know, not only a lifetime, but memories, but being, just being able to say, you know what? Yes, I can pick you up from school. I can drop you off at school, or if you need to come home early or whatever the case, may be however you peel that orange apart the bottom line is you have your freedom and that is priceless you cannot put a price tag on your freedom but similarly yes you do need to make money right if you want to maintain that type of lifestyle which is why jay and i are huge advocates we've always been huge advocates about people having their own show it is the best way to express yourself, you know, I was thinking the other day when there's something that you're struggling with and you feel like you just got to get it off your chest, you either call one or two people, you either pick up the telephone, if your mom's still alive, right, you pick up the phone, you call mom, and you let it out, right? Or you pick up the phone, and you talk to your friend, and you let it out, you release that stress or that anxiety and then by the time you get off the telephone oh my gosh you're laughing you're having a great time and you like all that energy and all that negativity just dissipated similarly having your own show allows that same type of freedom it allows you to to speak freely and release those whether there's toxins or negative thoughts or energies or similarly on this on the flip side you're having a, a great experience and a great moment and you just feel like you want to share with people when you start speaking you start releasing and you also start opening yourself up and it's the greatest way you know there's a, a lot of people that they they ask us all the time how do i actually get started how do i how do i start this well the first thing you need to do is open your heart and a lot of people have a tremendous blockage around their heart they have a tremendous amount of blockage i even had it myself for a long for many many years especially growing up i had a blockage in my throat chakra because i was constantly suppressed by my parents being like uh okay let me just before i say what i'm about to say i grew up in a very classic italian household okay my mother was tough as nails my father was tough as nails beautiful people right and i had a great childhood but they also grew up in a very rigid environment and that trickled down right so as i was growing up it's not like it was today. It was like, you're a child and your voice means nothing. So my voice was constantly being suppressed because I was told like, you know, um, don't, don't say that. I, I heard that all my life. Don't say that. Don't talk about that. Don't do this. Don't, you, know, you know, so you just suppress it and you suppress it and suppress it. So for the longest time, I had a very, very difficult time speaking or not so much speaking, speaking my truth. Right. 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 And allowing my 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 and allowing myself to be able to speak from my heart that took many many years of developing and that developing that and it happened um through the show you know we've interviewed now i i've lost count it's like well into the couple thousands of people that we've interviewed and it's been a progression of all of these years um just constantly opening myself up, opening my heart up and allowing myself to really speak freely and, 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 and speak with an open heart and an open mind and not have that constant, um, thing over your head where you're like, you know, no, you can't say that or no, don't do that. You know, and once you start to break that pattern and for people that have a closed heart or people that have trouble speaking their truth, Having your own show literally is going to force you to start speaking, force you to open your heart and force your throat chakra to start clearing out. I couldn't agree more with you. And as you were saying that, even though you come from a strict Italian background, I was thinking 
God, that's the same growing up in the South, you know, as a Southerner with a Southern family. Like one of my favorite things I've heard recently, because my mother used to say that to us, don't rock the boat or just keep the peace. Like, don't say anything. And I saw something that said, yeah, but whose peace are you trying to keep? when you do that but it is so hard and you are so right april and as you were saying that i keep thinking about all of our friends watching right now i get so many emails and i know you and jay probably get these same emails where people are stuck in jobs where they can't express themselves either they can't even express themselves on social media because the, the corporate drone is always big brother is always watching and so their humanity their personality the beautiful quirkiness about them starts to get stifled. Right. And yeah, yes. And you, of course you deal with, everybody deals with trolls on social media. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be mother Teresa. You could be Jesus himself and you're going to get trolled. That's right. just the nature of the beast, but you do get thick skin with mm -hmm. that. And you also find other like-minded people and your day and your time just gets so much more enjoyable in your life because you're not having to be somebody that you're not. And you're able to, and your truth is out there. Like it's who you are is out there. People love you or they don't. And you find the people that really love you and it makes your life. And as you're saying that too, I'm thinking, you know, I, I, um, I study a lot. We talk a lot on this channel, another talk about like narcissism and narcissistic abuse, all that stuff. And something interesting too, about this whole thing that made me, it made me reflect back on something that we've spoken about before children. And you were saying like, as a child, that generation children were to be seen, not heard all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, children pick up on dysregulation they don't know what it is and somebody said this and i thought it was awesome so a child a small child knows as that their survival is dependent upon their parents or whoever their guardians are and so if a parent is dysregulated meaning you're exhausted you're snappy you're tired the child who especially the more empathic child will start to hone in on that and try to fawn you in order to, and that's when they grow up. That's when they start attracting narcissists, all that kind of, it, it bleeds. Oh more. yeah. Yeah. So for a lot of parents, when I, when I, when I think about dysregulated adults, I think sometimes we go to the extreme of a narcissist or a borderline, but it can just be an overworked parent who is, is tired and snappy because they're exhausted. They have not had five minutes to themselves. I mean, I know most moms, don't even go to the bathroom by themselves until their kids are in college. <laughs> like everybody's got to right. join them. <laughs> I heard a comedian say it had been years. She had been to a gynecologist without a kid sitting on her head, you know, <laughs> you know, like most moms, you don't have that. And so in order, and I think too, sometimes we confuse, you know, for the, the money aspect, yes, you need to be pulling in money. And when you have a broadcasting, when you have a, a con, a channel on YouTube, the possibilities of making mon money are literally endless. Mm -hmm. And I told Jay this morning, April, that I'm just so grateful for him because he's helped me understand how to, how to even resource outsource myself even more. Um, and, and that is something, and, and, and people are like, what am I going to do? You know, and I tell, I, we said this in our course, I'm like, you can put anything on YouTube. Some of the most, okay. the biggest channels are people cleaning their houses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly putting on makeup or doing your hair whatever yeah I, I mean there's so many ways to make money it's incredible so if you're thinking okay well that's great they're they're all talented but what can i possibly do i promise you there is something in your life that you are talented at i promise you there is something in your life that you're a little bit better at than everyone else and there's a huge misconception that people that are on YouTube or, or social media that they're looked at in many people's eyes as experts, right? But that's really a misconception. And don't let that be a stumbling block. You do not need to be an expert in any specific field. What you need is passion, charisma, and an absolute knowing and wanting to succeed. If you have those elements, it doesn't matter about what you're talking about because your authenticity is going to shine through. So remember this, all you need to know if you want to start a channel is a tiny bit more than someone else that you're talking to. 
that is it. If you know a little bit more, that is it. You can just start talking. Next thing you know, you start gravit. People start gravitating, and they start resonating with your message, and they're resonating with your energy. I think a lot of times, Bryce, people get so caught up in what if what if I'm not good at it? What if I'm not as good as you know the influencers and no one ever starts out as an influencer okay no. <laughs> let's no. be very, very clear here you don't start out of the gates as an influencer and not only that you don't go at least i've never met anybody and we work with a lot of influencers i've never met one person that ever said i'm going to start a youtube channel to become an influencer no and, yeah right you start a youtube channel and then it starts to grow and then it grows more and then it, it's it's an evolution mm -hmm. um there are those cases you know oh somebody puts a, uh, a video up and it goes viral next thing you know you know they're at the top of the, they're they're at the, they're at the top of the um the um YouTube. algorithms yeah. Oh, right? yeah 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 top of the algorithms if that happens to you god bless you all right but in the interim just know that it's a progression and don't go in it with the with the concept of expecting this that and the other just go in it with an open heart go in it with like i'm gonna have fun with this if you just take the attitude of let's have fun it's something different i'm going to shine my personality i'm going to share my my passion and i'm going to let my charisma be my leading force right that is all you need. That is it. Have well, I, fun with it. I agree with you. You know, I used to say on my channel that I was an amateur researcher, just so people understood. Like, I do, there's nothing I'm doing that's any different than anybody else can do. I just happen to enjoy sneaking and looking at people from the past and like being petty. Like, I just happen to enjoy that, right? Like, that's what I enjoy. And you're so right. You know, and, and that's what with the whole like disreg, if you are one of those people, you feel like your adrenal glands are shot, you're got a demanding boss, you've got children pulling at you, you haven't gone to pee by yourself in like 10 years. You know, you're, you're, imagine how much more regulated you would be as a human. Um, and how much more your children would enjoy you because you were regulated if you got to i i told our i don't know if i've said this on a show i told our, our jay and i's course this though my aunt is, a, is a, in real estate and right when i decided that i was going to try to open up a youtube channel my mom told my aunt and my aunt was like that's fantastic because she had just worked with a client who was like a multi-millionaire because of his youtube channel do you know what he did on YouTube? Cleaned oriental rugs. <laughs> He's God really good at cleaning rugs. Right. <laughs> so he just makes videos and shows you how to do it. That's amazing. That is just an awesome example of you can make money. There's a, a million ways to, sun, to Sunday to make money on uh, the internet. You just have to find your niche. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself and allow yourself to just enjoy the experience. And you know what the best part about recording is, especially when you're recording, pre-recording like we're doing right now? If this flops, you just hit the delete button, button do and again. <laughs> you do it again. <laughs> exactly. And you know, um, Bryce, even today, even after all of the interviews that Jay and I have done, we still can interviews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I if if we finish an interview and it and for whatever reason it it's not up to the level that we expected to be at, we'll pull the show. We won't even send it through editing or anything, and we'll just say to the person either, you know, I apologize. Um, I'd like to reschedule this or redo it, and we just eighty six it and be done with it. And that's the great thing. And you know what? Not only that, even if you upload the show and then you decide later, ugh, maybe not. You can delete it. Yeah. Nothing is permanent. That it's, is it's, the best part about it. Nothing is per permanent. So don't take everything so seriously. That's the other thing too. I think a lot of people get tripped up on. They get so wound up and so tight, you know, so tense over it about if I do something wrong, let that go. Yeah. Let it go and just enjoy the experience.
Oh, you're so right. There's actually, there's been times where I will film a whole episode just by myself of a deep dive and I go back to sit to edit, edit it. And I'm like, I can tell the story better. Delete. Exactly. Just play back and be like, I can actually do a better job. Let me redo this, you know? And, and yeah, and, and honestly, April, you're so right because people are striving for like this sense of perfection. Exactly. It doesn't exist. Right. It, and, and your imperfections, your quirkiness is what's going to set you apart from other people too, you know? And I just, I just hope that I think, and think about this on a, cause I'm, I, you know, this idea of collective, like we have three karmas we're working with our own karma, our lineage and collective consciousness. So if we look at this from a collective, everybody wants the white hats to come in, wants to do all this. Well, what if we're the white hats and what if all of it takes is we all just shift ourselves just like exactly. that. I, 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 I'm so in alignment with you. I think we're actually both, yeah. you know, um, I think we are the dark hats, mm -hmm. the black hats. And I think we're also the white hats. Similarly yep. the energy that we harness, right? We are both energies. We have light and dark energies within us. The key to this whole enchilada is balance. Yes. <laughs> right? It's about learning how to balance the two energies. And I could tell you from experience that um, I've sparked some phenomenal ideas when I'm in or uh, working with my dark energy. All right. So a lot of people, you know, are like, oh, the dark, the dark, the dark. Hmm. Erase that. Phenomenal things can come out of when you learn how to harness and balance the dark with the light, all right? Now, when people say, oh, I'm all light, I'm all light, I'm all light. I don't think you're going to be on earth if you're all light, all light, no. all light, all light, all right? You're not going to be on this level of dimension as we are right now in this world today. We're always, as long as we're on this, walking on this earth plane, you're always going to have the dark and the light. It is just, it, it it's, it's a, a part of who we are. We're on and a polarized planet. We're so on a polarized planet. Exactly. So the, the key yin to, and the yang, that's the yin and the yang. Exactly. And the key to the whole thing is just learning how to balance both sides. Now, the other thing too, I think it's very, very, very important for people to, Tap into that dark side of them because how are you ever going to enjoy and experience the light if you shy away from the dark? You have to understand and you have to learn how to work within the dark side because we all have it. You can't just keep pushing it away and pushing it away or pushing it away. You're never going to grow. No. And what you're saying, we talk about this a lot too. It, that's the friction. So you're so right. You know, when we talk about your, we are your shadow side, your dark side, side, we're not talking about you going out there and murdering a bunch of people. We're talking about your own. Um, and that is what my friend Cindy from Sacred, the, who I teach for twice a week, she's awesome. She's been on the channel a lot. She is kind of a master at working in, in the dark side of her clients, like using it using that path to kind of yes. help you like trigger yes it's um and i use that that we call it friction um you know the, the match a ma you have a match everybody knows what a match looks like it has everything it needs to light but it can't light unless it's struck up against a matchbook you need that friction in order yes. and get you and you're right. I never even thought about that. April is that that playing itself out with people wanting to be perfect, and if they're not perfect, shutting down. And and this idea that and you're right. Yeah, we we um in, in the traditional yoga world, no one really even says light and love because we always say when you come into a spiritual path, the first thing you're going to meet is your darkness. It's going to come up big time. It's, it's going to come up big time. <laughs> yeah. It's going to come up and smack you right there across the face. Yes. <laughs> it will. You you will be busting your ass, like realizing. I, I tell my students, you know, in the yoga practice, I'm like, you kind of, all of a sudden you go, I'm, I'm kind of an asshole sometimes. Like you make this realization. But it's in that moment, you know, it's almost like sometimes when you watch a movie, it's like the anti-hero, the villain all of a sudden starts to become the 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 person you're rooting for because there's, there's, yes. there's human, there's, there's this human to them and again guys don't twist this we're not talking about what the 
the we're controllers of the world do. We're, right. we're talking about the average human being, the yes. uh, the lower chakras, the, you know, and for me, like I say, like I realized, you know, I can be petty. And a lot of times the petty things I say are just in my head. But I've realized when I'm doing a, a, a show myself, by myself, when I'm doing a deep dive, when I let that come out, the petty things come out, that's when people respond the most to my, cause, cause they're thinking the same thing. And so you start to, you know, <laughs> see those imperfections. And I'm so glad you brought that up. And, and part of the, the shadow side, the dark side is insecurity and in yeah. and, and just taking a chance and, and Marnie Alton, who is one of my favorite human beings, even though we've only briefly spoken, she's a bar teacher. I love, and she says amazing things in her classes. And one time she said, um, and I'm paraphrasing, when we get to the precipice of change, whether that's in an exercise class or on YouTube or just wanting to change your life, all of a sudden we start to want to fall back into the old pattern because the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Mm -hmm. What happens is when you feel that precipice of change coming, you just kept going. You break through a hell of a lot of barriers. Absolutely. You break through so many barriers. The, you, literally, the world, at that point, you are the master of your de destiny. If you can just keep going and going and going, and that takes practice, right? And it's well worth it. Um, I even, I can, you know, even from my own experiences, um, you feel like, you know, you keep pushing, pushing and pushing. And then you're like, you, you, you go back down and you're like, eh, I don't know if I'm ready to go there quite yet. Right. But you, and that's okay. Cause you can pull back, but you got to go back forward. And if you pull back, you're reassessing, you're reevaluating, you're reorganizing, you're rethinking, you're restructuring. So it's okay if to pull back while you're in that restructuring frame of mind, but don't go back so far that it's going to not allow you to move forward because when you do go back, it's like a, a right. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, bing, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And then you will literally, once you go back and then you're ready to go back for, forward again, you're going to leap and you're going to spring forward further than you ever even imagined. And that also, here's the big thing too. You have to have faith and trust you have to have faith and trust not only in your own ability but you have to have faith and trust that the universe got you back yeah. you have to have faith and trust to know that if you are moving in alignment with what your heart and soul want you have to have faith and trust to know that the universe is going to back you 100 percent 1 million percent when you're in alignment and you're moving in the direction that your soul wants to move in the universe is going to fuel that energy and they're going to catapult you now what happens is oftentimes there will be a block right and you're like well, where did that come from i wasn't expecting that well sometimes that's the universe's way of saying you know what mm, uh don't go that way go this way course and, correct yeah right right exactly so when you have those moments and you're like i wasn't expecting that now my whole game is thrown off you know my my plans all out of whack know that you know what it's probably because you were going in this direction when the universe is wanting you to go this way so you have to trust yourself you have to trust the universe one you know it's so as you're saying that i i shared this book with jay once i'm just going to share it again guys because what um what april is talking about is covered a lot and this is what was one of the most astounding books i read i lent my copy once to somebody never got it back but it's flow the psychology of the optimal experience wow and i'm gonna put a link in the description box below for this book it is one of the best books on the human psychology and what it means to be in the flow state and nice. what can actually start to happen when you're in that flow state? And two, you know, one thing I've and we've I've noticed in uh, before on YouTube in the Ashtanga world, especially with my clients and students and myself, and this can also be seen in the world of create of creating content or something else. Like you know, the the traditional yoga practice is really hard; it breaks your body down. And yeah. I've noticed with a lot of students, including myself, 
that before there's a breakthrough, like before you're able to actually get your leg behind your head or do a, a drop back stand up before that happens, usually there's a couple of weeks of a lot of pain and mm -hmm. a, where you feel like you're stepping backwards and your body is falling apart and just riding that out, letting it be that way. And then all of a sudden the body takes that leap and moves into a new territory. And I think the same can be said in life as well at least i've noticed those patterns in my life times in my life where i feel like i'm being held and everything's in their forces against me and all that kind of stuff if i just breathe into that all of a sudden there's another breakthrough and it usually comes from another avenue in the same umbrella of things opening up if that makes sense and just and i know i i, I struggle with anxiety so i get when that when things like that happen people are like oh no it's over it's done but I love that. Just breathe for a moment and trust that the universe has your back. And you are, if you're in that flow state, then you are in alignment in the now. And we know, especially from A Course in Miracles, that the idea of God or whatever you want to label that higher consciousness source lives in the now, not in the past or the future, but here in the now. Mm -hmm. And so being in that flow brings you to that point of inner security of I'm on the path I am supposed to be on. And something else, I was telling my friend Kelly this, I saw this on Instagram, at Instagram, and I thought this is genius. You know, this girl was talking about how the power of thoughts and being grateful and all those things to change and how people have a hard time. They want to change, but they have a hard time changing their thought process. And something simple that she started doing, and I've started doing it too, you know, in life, we always say prepare for the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. Well, every time that is putting a message to the universe, that that's what you want. So right. how about instead in the prepare morning, best. <laughs> yeah, in the morning you wake up and go, what's the best case scenario for this day? Well, look at your energy. Yeah. Um, look at how your energy shifts when you, when you say, and you do that and you're embracing that when you're embracing that energy, you're allowing the universe to come in and, and say, you know what? Um, it, really, it's like, you're giving gratitude. Mm -hmm. You're giving gratitude and you, there's your faith and your belief that the universe has your best interest at heart. It's so easy. I love what you just said, because it is so easy to go down the negative Nelly road. Yeah is so easy and all we have to everything that we're talking about really boils down to a oh, one thing it's your mindset mm -hmm. right um once you have the mindset to be able to say you know what wait a minute i can either have a really crappy day or i can wake up and have an absolutely fantastic day i can either expect the worst to happen today or i can absolutely expect the best why would you not want to expect the best yeah primarily it's because we've just been so programmed see the other thing is too there's that whole agenda of being programmed right we've been literally programmed to be mediocre yeah. we've been programmed to accept mediocre as you know great we've been programmed to accept just have enough to pay your bills even today, people are afraid to say, I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. Well, think of it from this perspective. It's your birthright. Yeah. It is your God given, goddess given birthright to be wealthy, to be successful, to be smart, to be healthy. We have been programmed to believe that our birthright is to be unhealthy, overweight, depressed, and broke. Yeah. You know what it is, too, as you're saying that, it's so interesting because, I, you know, I grew up in a Presbyterian home. I'm sure um, you being a Italian, probably Catholic. So we had this oh, like yeah. religious you know, <laughs> the Jesus story. And they told us he was a poor boy and he was born in this this like farm a manger you know and mm -hmm. as you're saying that and i think that kind of set us on this this idea that that in order to be holy or good you have to be in in suffering right or in, in poverty and that god will provide god will provide well my friends if that's 
if you look at your programming, if you grew up like April and I did, you had that kind of shoved in your face. Although funnily enough, the Presbyterian church, most Presbyterian churches are pretty wealthy people. So that's actually kind of hysterical that they try that on Presbyterians, but um, all doctors and lawyers and all that kind of stuff. But I was in my research when I, especially when I was into the missing books, really going through the missing books, the Bible, I was looking at a lot of these archaeologists finds and like really reading through theses and all that kind of stuff and lawsuits, lawsuits, they're fun. And a lot of these archaeologists who worked with like language specialists went back through these texts. Jesus's father, Joseph, was not a carpenter. That was a mistranslation, which I believe was, I personally believe was done on purpose. He was an architect. A very wealthy one. Very wealthy. <laughs> Extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. So Jesus was not poor. No. At all. No. And in fact, the fact that he had money meant that they're, they're missing books in the Bible that he wrote himself. He was educated, mm -hmm. right? Um, he spoke multiple languages. It meant that he was able to find travel throughout people. the Middle East. Poor people don't travel throughout the right. Middle East, <laughs> especially right. with an entourage. Right. So exactly. re re if you're someone that is a follower of the Christian faith, then kind of rethink that for a moment. The common sense there, like if I want to, I've been very blessed to be able to travel, but those plane tickets cost money, right? Same thing back then. They had to pay for to feed the donkeys to feed the horses to make you know there was a lot that went into it that cost money so obviously common sense would tell you he came for money he had money and he mm -hmm. was trained uh, to be a architect too he wasn't a carpenter that was a mistranslation he was an architect so so rethink that a little bit you know like how you see that story and how that imp implies in your life absolutely i mean when you think about it the three wise men right they brought they brought baby Jesus or Yeshua, how, whatever you, that resonates with you. Um, frankincense, myrrh, gold. Yeah. They would not, I mean, if you think about it from that perspective, that is something that you bring royalty. Exactly. You do not bring that to poverty. <laughs> right? No, no. I, at all so but you know an interest i mean there's so many different um uh, variations of and 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 uh, concepts of why he was not poor but you know, i don't even know if you know this we did an entire series with ethan um ethan um ethan lucas we did a series called um the rich jesus i and have to check it out it's awesome. I, it was one of my, I, I really, really love the series. We probably did like 14 shows with him and he debunked every myth about Jesus being broke. And yeah. um, for those that really want to dive in and learn more about that, they're actually all posted. They're all hosted on um, the Gnostic TV network. And it's a phenomenal series if people want to learn more about it. And That's um, that's amazing. I'll put a link to that to the Gnostic TV network down below, guys. Because yeah, that we know. Like I tell people, I'm like the missing books of the Bible tell you the real story. The right. one the Bible that was written by the Freemasons, y'all. Like, <laughs> nice. and and you see what they're doing. They're keeping us in a low vibration. That in order to be holy, you have to be a renunciate. You have to be poor. I mean, the in, in Indian culture, how many of the of the incarnations of God in the Indian culture are dripping in diamonds and gold? You are reading my mind. Okay, so let me say this to you. When I was saying it's your God or goddess given birthright, I was about to say, look at any picture or or image of any god or goddess in any type of religion, mythology, doesn't make it doesn't matter. They are dripping in gems precious gemstones diamonds gold pearls you name it you don't see any of them looking broke or poor <laughs> right no no it's their god god has given birthright as it is ours as above so below right and there's it, enough on this planet to go around that's another myth that there's not enough to go around lie. i believe in a god i believe in a source why the hell would this source create us as a fractal of light from that God and then put us on this earth to be living in huts made of mud and going to the bathroom on the ground like that. No, 
That's not, that's not what, and I, and I, people who do have a very giving heart, you know, the more money that you bring in, the more you can do. You can volunteer your time at a soup kitchen, at a, you know, a rescue shelter. It's going to give you that flexibility to be of more, of more service to others. And it's funny, April, Jay and I were talking about that this morning about getting rid of this myth that you have to be poor and in, in order to be valuable spiritually or to be valuable, you know, in, in the sense of your integrity, which is getting rid as, as gel, as Jay said, send it back to hell from whence it came. You know? Exactly. I think that especially in the spiritual genre, this is such a rap rampant. Uh, it's like a disease. It's like, it's fake news too. It, it it's it's so propaganda. Funny. It's propaganda. It is fake news. Absolutely. You know, I heard a saying once, um, someone said, and I, I couldn't agree anymore. Um, wait, let me think about it. It was, um, uh, oh my gosh, it's about being rich. Hold on. Uh, I'll think of it in a second. It's like the perfect, um, perfect saying to it. it. It'll come back to me in a second. But yes, that is, I, I think not only is it a lie, it's criminal. Oh, for sure. Well, it, it is absolutely of energy. Criminal. You can't, and we, and I know because in, uh, and 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 my boyfriend gets upset about this because people will try to come to our business and want to practice for free because it's yoga, and we're like, well, we had to pay money to go to school in India. My teacher in India, who's the Param Guru of the Ashtanga lineage, you don't practice until you've paid your tuition. You know, he's got a whole staff he has to pay. He has lights he's got to keep on. And and they say, well, you know, there's all these stories of these Indian gurus teaching people for free. No, 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 no. It's an exchange of energy. So what was happening with these little boys that would go live with Krishmacharya and he would teach them yoga for free? Well, they were working for him, too. They were Exactly. So Absolutely, they were. If you want to go live at our shala and clean it every day and dust it and and check people in, then we can negotiate. Yes, but there was an exchange of energy. I was you took the words right out of your, my mouth. It is it. That's the other thing. How people have to look at money. Yeah. Money is an exchange of energy, and right now in the world that we live in today, you need money to survive, and that is yes. the bottom line. You know, when we went to India. Um, like at least 16 years ago now we met a traditional indian hindu guru i mean like the real deal the white beard down to here and the hair and the turban and the shoes and the whole i mean exactly how you would picture a guru and he had said to us then that we need and should always have at all times five resources of income coming in. Now that came from a true Indian guru told us we need five sources of income coming in at all times. Um, so, you know, it's my, uh, my grandfather, my late grandfather who died a very wealthy man used to say that um, he used to say, you need multiple, multiple, multiple income sort income streams coming in. Um, he would always say, do not put all your eggs in one basket. And he had, you know, he's my grandfather who had the near death experience in his forties on, you know, pretty much died then came back into his body. And after that moment, I mean, I only knew him after it. Um, but everybody says that there was a huge shift in him after that. And he had this pre big presence and he taught, he very much now he died a very wealthy man. The, the final time, the second time he died in this life, the final time. He died a very wealthy man, but he was also with that money that he ended up making. He in the, in the in the second half of his life, you guys, like after the age of 45, like he he had his near death experience was like middle class. And after that, he took off and started to, you know, and, and that comes down to this. All that ultimately, every fear we have comes to the fear of death. Once you don't fear death anymore, you're limitless. And so he started he patented all these pillows. He, he had all these these. He just started doing these things. Oh, and, when I was growing up, he was constantly in the community helping helping other people. So he was using that 
to also help others get, you know, he was constantly paying for people to immigrate over here, getting them lawyers, getting them jobs so that they could start the American dream. So they could start to support their families and, and start that, you know, so he was also giving, but he was making a lot of money too. And he would say that to us all the time, April, like we were kids, even when we didn't even understand what he was talking about. He'd be like, multiple streams of income always 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 and so um and that and again back to like with this alignment with this being regulated as a human being feeling fulfilled by what you're doing during the day having that flexible schedule youtube or rumble bit shoot that is the starting point that's going to give you multiple revenues of income and it's limitless what can start to happen. And so, I mean, it isn't it, April. Like, people often think, oh, you're just putting your stuff on the internet. That's that. You get your AdSense. No, AdSense is so useful. So. Right. You to, like, yeah. You know, I, um, I admire your grandfather, too, because he was literally living and endorsing the 5D economy, yeah. right? He was creating abundance by helping other people create abundance. And that's the other thing too. When you are living in a wealthy and rich mindset, let, uh, let's kind of just go back for one second. It is impossible. I don't care what anybody says to you. You will never be wealthy or rich. I'm just using those words, right? Whatever your interpretation of wealthy or rich is because it's all relative. But you can never get there if you have a broke mindset. So the first thing that you need to do is take that broke mindset and literally throw it in the trash or what Jay says, send it back to hell where it belongs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to shift your mindset. That is the first thing you need to do is to shift the mindset and and say to yourself i am worthy i am worthy to receive all of the greatness in life that is why we are here we are here you were brought here or you incarnated here on earth if you want to just break it all apart and what is the bottom line you were here to enjoy life you're here to be happy that is truly listen you can put a million tags on yourself i'm this i'm that i'm whatever the bottom line is you are here to find your happiness and be happy and enjoy the experience enjoy the uh, experience of this earth life okay yes. And when you start to enjoy the experience, that's when the mind starts to shift and the energy starts to shift and the vibration and your frequency. And you start connecting with like-minded people. And you start at that point um, easily starting to create multiple sources of income because you're you're the ideas are flowing now. And once the ideas start flowing, you know, it, it's kind of like you're an artist or or a writer, right? And you get writer's block. And you're sitting there and you're looking at the paint and the canvas and nothing is happening. Or you're sitting at the computer and you're just like, you know, nothing's happening. But the moment you take that brush stroke or the moment that you're like, you know what? I'm just going to write the first paragraph or the first chapter or the first outline. The moment that you take action, inspiration starts flowing. Because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the reaction yeah. to the action is creation. And yes. that's when you're not evolving, you're dying. Like you're either evolving or dying. Like that's it. So when they're, when it's stuck and you just take that, you're so, you're so right at April because it's that, then that flow is the reaction to the action that you've taken. And you're in control of that. You are the person you, you're a fractal of God. Like how dare you think you deserve to be broke? Like you're a fractal of God and you're exactly. right. We came, it's so funny. I was laughing in my head. I was laughing as you were saying this because they're the Cassiopeians spoke about this. We, we, we read that we follow the Cassiopeians and they talked about a long, 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 long time ago, third density, the density we're in everybody in third density knew everything. They came to this planet without the veil of amnesia and they had so much fun because they knew the end result that it took, they, they, they evolved in consciousness at a snail's pace because mm. they came here and they were just enjoying the food and like living the good life on earth because they knew what was, so they were like, really, it was like, it was like, let's get to third density. Cause that's the part, you know, and, and they had to, this, the spiritual world had to like put an amnesia over us just to speed us up a little bit because they're like, all right, guys, you can't, you can't, you got to keep going. So you're so right. Like being able 
you know, I, I always laugh about Planet Earth. If if there, if it uh, if there was a Yahoo review left for Planet Earth, it would be like people are kind of gangster, but the French fries are really good. You know, like, you know, like that's awesome. <laughs> so yes, and like how, and that's that best case scenario when you're asking the universe for the best. It's going to keep giving you stuff to continue working in that pattern. You know, and and so I and I know that's hard. Like if you're somebody watching right now and you grew up maybe in an abusive home or anything like that, that's really hard to start thinking of yourself as worthy, as worthy for that. And trust me, if you guys, if you, if you, if that's something that if there's a lightning bulb moment where you're like, I have a hard time thinking of myself as, as that, I would also suggest finding a good trauma therapist to help you break out of that habit as well. Because, you know, you, you can course correct that you can use that darkness, right? As, as April was saying that shadow side, that darkness, use that to then friction you into to the opposite of that. And so, so April, I know I can talk to you all day. I know we're coming up at an hour. Likewise. I know we could like <laughs> talk all day. Right. About we should do a panel of all females as we talk about going into eventually into this new, this as we're, we're consciously shifting it. into this new awareness. Cause listen, y'all it's return to the divine feminine. And if you do study the, the light and dark path. And I don't want to freak anybody out because again, we're not talking about the controllers. That's a totally different level of psychotic darkness. We're talking about your own chat, your own stuff. The dark path is the feminine path mm -hmm. and everybody. And that's also the intuitive path. And you think about that too. Like when a sperm hits an egg, egg is creation or light is creation. When the sperm hits the egg, there's a flash of light that creation happens. But then after that flash of light happens and it's created, the embryo is created, it's in darkness for nine months as it grows and changes. True. Mm -hmm. They need each other. The mm -hmm. the dark and the and the light need each other in order to create this beautiful place we live on. So don't be afraid of that anger, that, that jealousy, that that darkness. Like use that as a starting point, as a friction, a place of friction for your own your own creation. And so April, we are, so we are doing, and Jay and you are such geniuses to be able to kind of create this. Aww. My viewers watch right now. You can text Bryce media to three, two, one, two, one, six, 80, 47, April. I've told Jay before it's his phone number and my mama's phone number. Those are like the two numbers I remember now. And if my mama doesn't, if I get arrested, and my mama doesn't pick up, I'm calling Jay because it's the only other number I know by heart at this point. So, so he, he'll, Jay will have to come bail me out because the only other no number I know by heart now, but 321 216 8047. That will also be in the description box below. You just text Bryce Media to that number. That is Jay. So you will directly speak with Jay. And you guys have set up this amazing resource to help people get started with so many different like topics and, and things to do. Do you want to explain that a little bit, uh, April? Yeah, I, I would love to. Um, it's called the uh, Attract Everyone Academy, Attracting Everyone Academy. And, you know, um, how it even came to be was really through ASEA. Mm -hmm. um, when we went to the Diamond Summit in St. Thomas, it, there was only less than 35 people in the entire world that made that convention and we were one of them and um everyone there came up to us and they kept asking us well how, how did we do it so fast how did we get to this level of double diamond in, in less than a year and when we got back well, not even when we got back when we were there we're like we need to you know right put this down in, into like i don't want to call it a course because it's not a, a course it's something very very unique where um, people like yourself will ask a question and then Jay and I answer the question. And what we've done is, you know, before we started Spiritually Raw, our background is sales and marketing. So we literally, I mean, between the two of us, there's over 50 years of sales and marketing expertise and experience. So we wanted to put all of that knowledge and how and what we've learned and, the, and also the mistakes that we've made so other people don't make the same mistakes so they don't make the same financial mistakes that we've made so it cuts out a whole lot of fat it gets right to the core it helps it's mind body spirit and prosperity we've literally put all the core ingredients together into one academy and um jay's actually working on um a series right now it's called uh the secrets to broadcasting riches i'm doing the secrets to interview riches and i also started um a series within it called the 12 universal laws and that really helps people put things into perspective and then in between those series there's like 
dozens, many dozens, like I don't even know how many we're up to now, like 60 questions from people like yourself and other influencers that asked us questions and we answered them in little nuggets. They're four to five minute nuggets. So they're very easy to watch, very easy to absorb. There's music in the background. So it's very like relaxing and it's an easy, easy way to learn a lot of information in a short bite-sized amount of time. And um, it's, we're really, really enjoying not only creating the course, but again, our, you know, if, if we could ever go down in history as something, <laughs> I would love to go down in history as, you know, the ones that really helped make the movement towards the 5D economy, which is creating abundance by helping others create abundance. That is truly the way it was always meant to be. And it's just going back to like the grassroots of creating and the grassroots of development development and creation and um, mindset. It teaches, you know, it's it, it's it, for people that are in, in a mindset funk and they can't snap out of it or they can't break through patterns. There's so many little bite-sized nuggets of videos on how to... Um, how to raise your vibration, how to raise your vibration and keep it there, how to um, manifest, it's manifestation, it's abundance, it's creating, it's uh, uh, broadcasting riches, it's interview riches. So it's really, it's, it's really everything that we've done over the past, you know, 25 years into bite-sized nuggets in an and academy. That's so helpful because so many people who want to start a channel, um, April might like, know some things but have just questions about a couple of things and they can go to the menu and find what they're looking for and it's amazing because you know so uh, something that i and that's just what jay has helped me be able to market my strong suits with this and it's like you know i don't know if people really know this but before i went to india just said screw it all and packed my bags and went to india I had gone to college for a whole different thing and I studied story time. That's how, that's why I know how to storyboard and how to, and so with our last course that we just ran, um, that's what I, to help people know how there is a secret to putting, you know, I tell people all the time, like you can find one subject, one story, look on YouTube and find two different creator creators who have covered the same topic. Look at the one that has the highest views and the one that has the low views. It's the same topic. How come one person's video is more exciting to watch than the other? There's a secret. They know what they're doing yeah. with the storyboarding. And I can and I can absolutely help people with that. And I didn't even realize until I started talk, talking to Jay that that's a skill I actually paid a lot of money in school to learn with all the different philosophers and people that. And, and now I can make it very simple for you and really, you know, help you get your content put together to make it entertaining and make your videos catch, you know? So that is so incredibly valuable. I cannot stress enough the importance of that because that is another stumbling block that people have. And now that you're able to come in and be like, okay, listen, I have a plan. We're going to execute it. And you're giving people very specific steps of how yeah, to do yeah. it. Listen, I don't care what, field you're in. I don't care what level of expertise you have. I don't care what level of spirituality you have. Everybody needs a mentor. Yeah. Everybody needs a coach. Every Look at the president. He's got a whole cabinet, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this one in particular has got like 10 extra people just to make sure he gets on the stage. Not, not this one, but you know, we know what we're talking about. But <laughs> and that's and there is guys there is a secret it's a very yes. once you understand the method of storytelling it's, it's actually it's that's what it's called it's a method yes. it starts to make sense and you start to realize why some people are better storytellers than others because they know the secret there is an actual method to doing this and it can you're right april you can take even if you're not doing like a deep dive channel like i do Let's say you are cleaning oriental rugs on YouTube. <laughs> How are you going to make that interesting to your viewers so that they watch your channel and not the other guys? I know how to do that. It's very simple. And I will give you all the information. I will tell you if you want a deeper look at it, I will give you all the different philosophers who came up with this. this is the same method that people who write uh, playwrights use, that, that directors in Hollywood use. That's why they they can take. Um, have you? I don't know if you guys are Broadway fans, but there's a um, play Hamilton. It's 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 fairly new. 
-hmm. And someone even said, you took, to, and it's a very t Tony winning, an incredible play. And someone was like, you took some of the most boring parts of American history, most absolute boring people in the American Revolution and turned it into a Tony Award winning play. How they did that, I know how they did that. It's very simple. And mm -hmm. so I, if you guys want, you te text Bryce Media 3212168047. I will be more than happy with Jay and April to help you guys if that is your, now when it comes to business and stuff, that's not, I, I need a Jay. I told Jay. That's Jay's wheelhouse. <laughs> I need a Jay. Like I, I think I'd say that, say that's Jay every time I talk. It was like, I need you. Like I don't, you know, um, I, we can, and, and once you just know these few things, your confidence, when you have that clarity, exactly. oh, that's how they're doing it. That makes sense. Once you understand that, you will go and soar, you know? I can't stress enough the value of that because what you ha are doing is shaving down the time and all of your learning experience, all of those years, and you're saying, listen, I'm taking all of my experience, everything I've learned, and I'm going to show you exactly how you how you can do it in an easy to follow format that is worth gold yeah yes. and it can, like i said it can be on deep dives it can be on storytelling it can be on cleaning carpets it can be on it what is it going to take to make it interesting for your audience and once you know you'll never have a boring video once you know you're off and gonna go <laughs> yes you're off then you'll then you'll help be helping us in return no, just kidding. Um, and we just had an amazing course in april jay and i did and i'm not going to say a bunch bunch about our students um content but i because I, I don't want to spoil it but i am so excited i don't know if jay's told you a whole lot about holy shit we've got some really and we have one person or all of them actually took something yeah. pretty common and pretty kind of like eh, and they turned it into something that i cannot wait to see their channels open and i cannot wait to bring them on my channel so you guys can see because it is um one of our our, our students i won't say her name because i don't want to embarrass her she had been sending me some rough footage of her first video and we tweaked a few things and she sent me her final video and embarrassingly after i watched it i cried so I was so Aww. proud of her because it, it was Aww. such a, you saw that shift. It's so and sweet. When, when you see that shift, you know, you're like, okay, you know, now she, she, she understands that she gets what that, what the, what, that showbiz kid, like she gets like <laughs> that magic. And it was so entertaining in the way. And I was like, girl, you're going to soar with this. Like, like the, you figure you found it, you, you found it. And now that you found it, you're never going to, you're always going to have it. And that, that little, that little trick to, it's not, it's not even a trick. It's not, it's just, it's just figuring out how to, how to basically put things together in a way that's, and, and I can, and it's very simple. And so once you know it, you know it. And I'm so excited. There's so much potential out there. And I think we live in the best, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times, right? Like, you know, <laughs> it's that shadow and light, right? As the world's falling apart around us <laughs> and World War Three is going to break out any day now, we're also discovering these like nuggets of, of just, you know, just sparkle everywhere. And, you know, yeah. one of my, fa my favorite sayings, I don't know if you heard it uh, April before, it's like, don't steal my sparkle. I love it. <laughs> don't let the world steal your sparkle. You were you were born to sparkle. So don't let the world steal your sparkle. Find that sparkle and bring it back. And and you 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 know, anyway. So I know we've been going over an hour now, April, but um you guys let me know in the comment section below if you have any like questions or just something that we can look at. Um and then I can bring you back, April, and we can, awesome. um, can maybe get some other of our female friends. Yes. Who have in this and doing this too to kind of come on and we can do a round table and i hope you guys for the men out there too you also have the divine feminine with you as well absolutely so find it find it so absolutely all right you guys well i'm going to put all the links down in the description box below so that you see spiritually well on youtube they, they have their channels i'll also put their links to gnostic tv um send me everything you want in the description box, April, and I will make sure I've got everything down there because truly it is awesome. As Ram Dass says, we are all just walking each other home. There you go. We might not know where home is yet, but <laughs> we're all going there together. So we, we might get lost along the way, but at least we're trying to get there. So, so anyway, guys, any parting words, April, before we sign off for today? Yes, it's always such a joy. I am so grateful to be in your energy. And for anyone that is listening, take a leap of faith. Uh, Bryce, you have extended such an incredible olive branch. And, you know, looking back, if I 
was, you know, when we had first started out and I saw someone that was offering that, I would have jumped on it in a New York second because why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I not want to take an olive branch from someone who is already successful, who is already where I want to be? That is going to save you an enormous amount of time, enormous amount of energy, and enormous amount of money. Please um, take a leap of faith and, and follow your heart. Live in alignment and enjoy the experience. 100% life is to be lived. Yes. Not to be ignored. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Again, I look forward to continuing this conversation. So leave those comments down. And once again, if you are like, I want to do this, I can't handle my life anymore. And I want to make a change. Text Bryce Media, B-R-I-C-E Media to 321-216-8047. And that is directly to Jay. And he will contact you and we'll figure out what it is that you're actually looking for. And then we'll we'll get you started. So remember, action is reaction. That's creation. So just, just send the text. <laughs> that's the first, all you got to do is send a text. And that's the first action. So... <laughs> All right, you guys, have a wonderful day, and we will see all of you very, very soon. Bye, everybody.